Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy. Now in the last video, we looked at clicking on a paragraph which had uh, some text inside to actually hide an element using the onClick event. And we used this to reference the, uh, the paragraph. So let's just have a look at how that works. So we've hidden it with a uh, value of a thousand uh, as a parameter in this hide function here. However, we have a problem uh, using this method. Now we're doing something called it. Well, we're using something called inline um, scripting. So we are using this function inline to our HTML. Now the goal is to keep the HTML and the JavaScript or the jQuery library referencing in this example um, as separate as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this here. We're still going to use the on click event because we want something to happen when we click the paragraph. However, we're actually going to create a separate fu function in JavaScript, which allows us to hide this. So let's go ahead and create a new file. And inside here, we're just going to create a function and that's going to be called hide. In fact, let's call it hide um, element. Okay, now the same concept is going to apply. We're still going to use the jQuery code. However, we're going to save this file somewhere uh, where we can use it. Now we're going to save it in our uh, JS folder, and I'm just going to be call I'm just going to call this jfunk.js. Okay, so we've saved that. You can see that my syntax highlighting has been turned on for JavaScript, so that helps. Um, we're going to take a couple of parameters in here. The first one is going to be the element we want to hide and the second parameter is going to be the speed in which we want to do it so we can just type uh, speed here and we're going to call this hide element function from this on click event so let's go ahead and say hide element there now we're going to fill in the parameters just in here in a moment but let's go ahead and write out the code we need inside of our function it's essentially the same we need a dollar sign and then in here, we need the element name. So that's the reference to the element. And then we're going to say hide. And in here, we're going to write speed. So we're taking element and we're hiding element. That might be this, or we might reference the element uh, using a uh, hash, which I'll explain in a moment. And then that hides it at the speed we specify as well. So now we have the benefit of being able to hide lots of elements on our page using only one function and we don't have to duplicate this code and use it in line. So let's go over to index.php. The one thing we need to do is we're just gonna copy and paste this down, and we're actually just gonna change this here to jfunk, and that means that we've now included this file inside of our page. So as well as taking advantage of jQuery, we can also take advantage of our separate function library. Okay, so hide element. What, what here we need to, um, say what we want to hide and in this case it will be this and then we can give a speed 1000 oh, not 10,000 okay so now what what's going to happen is it's going to pick up on this uh, element it's going to pass that to this hide element function and it's going to hide that element and it's going to hide it at the speed that we've specified so this is a much better way to do things and as well if we had lots of other different paragraphs down the page we just need to need to call the same function and therefore, if we want to change something like uh, what happens, we might want to add a few more functions in here. Uh, we can uh, take advantage of that because we don't need to change it for each paragraph. So let's go ahead and first of all, see if this works. Let's go and click on it. And you can see we have the exact same uh, result happen, uh, but we're using a function and we're not writing our code in line. We're just calling a function. So bear in mind that when you're writing code, this is the best way to do things. And it's always best to include it in a separate library to ensure that you have a list of functions and you're not including them in the head of your page. You could in fact come down here and type script type equals, oops, sorry, script type equals text, JavaScript, script, and you could write your functions in here. However, it's a lot better to include them in a separate file uh, that's kept elsewhere. Okay, so fair enough, we are using the this reference to uh, reference the current paragraph. However, what happens if we want to include something like a button? Uh, we may want to have a button that actually uh, allows us to press the button and then hide a specific element. 
So let's get rid, get rid of this on click event. But now what we want to do is give an ID to this paragraph. So the ID could be called paragraph. Okay. Now down here we could create a button. Uh, it could be a uh, hyperlink, an HTML hyperlink. It doesn't matter at all what it is. We any way you can use the on click event, this will work. So input type equals button, value equals hide. Now what we have is we have a button underneath which we're going to click and this is going to hide. So let's go and create an on click event. Now when we click this, we can call the same function, but this time instead of referencing this, um, we can reference this paragraph by using the ID of paragraph. So. Uh, let's go ahead and create a well, reference our function or call our function. So hide element and in here we type the name. Now usually we type this and then a thousand. A thousand is fine, we can keep this. But this is actually going to then hide this button. So you can see that by using this we've hidden the button. So it's not worked properly. Well it has worked but we haven't hidden what we want to hide. Instead inside um, speech marks or single quotation marks we can actually use a hash and then we can use the name of the element we want to hide so that in that case it's paragraph okay so we've called it this we've given this the id paragraph so now when we go back to our page and we click hide you can see that that element we've specified is actually hidden so this is a typical ex example of how we don't use inline um, scripting which is a, often regarded a bad practice and we can actually use a function instead but we can actually change our function to suit our needs so we can now call any element in the page and hide it using a specific speed and then also if you were to look up the parameters that uh, the hide function takes you could actually then include more parameters in here as long as you specify them in here so we've now learned how to do that but what happens now if we want to use toggle? Now toggle is another function which allows us to toggle a specific element. And essentially toggle is neither hide or show. But what toggle does is it checks the state of the current object or the current element and it will either hide or show it depending on its uh, visibility. So in the next tutorial we're going to be looking at specifically the toggle function.